So hello everybody. Today I would like to do a brief leaf through um, a book which I think is essential reading if you want to run Das Schwarze Auge DSA. It's called Historia Aventurica. It was um, released in 2015. This current edition that I'm looking at is was released in 2015. And if you are ever going to run DSA and really take it seriously, you need two things. You need a rule book and you need this book. Because this book is actually the history of Dere from the very beginning, um, how it was, um, first of all, there is some information about how the world of Dere was conceptualized by the people who have created um, DSA and who have been working on DSA over the last 30 odd years. Um, and it also tells you how the world itself came into being. Um, it tells you everything about the different ages that this world has gone through. At the moment, we are in the 11th age. Um, and uh, very important uh, things that have happened, how the world has developed, who has been ruling the world in what age. I mean, there was the age of the dragons, of the, or of the, um, yeah, of the dragons. Um, then there was the age of um, the many-legged ones. So basically they've got um, insect and um, insectoid beings and also arachnid beings that ruled the world. Um, there is the there is the age of um, the um, of the giants etc. So um, there is the age um, the, the ninth age is the age of the invasion um, from the seas. Um, the fifth age is the age of the nameless one. He's um, he's the he's the big um, antagonist um, that basically appears throughout the ages. Um, and uh, they give you all kinds of information on how the world has come into being and what has happened through the ages. Now, of course, what we have to bear in mind is that whenever you try to explain a world, especially uh, a makey uppy world, because, of course, Dere doesn't exist, um, you have to, and especially if it's a world that's going to be played in, you have to kind of strike a balance between how much do you tell people because how not every player is able to distinguish between what I know as a player and what my character might know. And in addition, um, Dere and Aventuria, as it is today, is, of course, based on the Middle Ages. There isn't science to speak of. There isn't archaeology. You know, we don't have um, carbon dating. None of these exist in this world. So anything that you might know about the prehistory um, might have come down to you through written records, if whoever lived and ruled the world actually developed writing, not all cultures do that, if the writing has survived, depending on what you write on, you might never get it back. If, if, it, if it basically is on perishable um, material, then the writing will have gone. Um, if, you, if, you, if you are a stonemason and you basically make stelae and you... you, you um, you use them to write on, like for example, the Rosetta Stone. That's not a stelae, but it, it it's it's writing um, inscribed in stone. It may last through the ages, but it may not. Um, if somebody basically decides to break it up and then um, use it for building materials, and we all know this. I mean, um, a lot of um, I mean, in our own history, um, um, we have lost uncountable numbers of important texts simply because Alexandria's library burned down several times. It didn't just burn down once, but it burned down several times. But every time it burned, it consumed um, vast amounts of books um, and knowledge that we will never, ever get back. Um, and so um, what they have done is they have taken all of the knowledge of the world that they have created over time. And even in the beginning, in the, at the very beginning of DSA, they had an idea of what the different ages would look like and what would have gone before. So you've got the dragons, you've got the multi-legged ones, um, you've got the nameless one who, who ruled a whole age. And of course, um, you also have the different gods because different peoples believe in different gods. Um, the, the, uh, the, the, um, the orcs have their own pantheon um, sometimes. And the way this also works is that each eon is ruled by a different set of, of gods. So there is a place called Alvaran, which is a lot like Asgard um, or for the Norse gods. It's kind of like their, yeah, their castle where they live. Let's, let's put it this way. And they basically um, 
get assigned a domain or sometimes more than one domain that they rule over and a place in Alvaran. And this assignation is done every um, between um, one age and another age. So there's a kind of like a middle age or, a, or an in-between time. And then Ka, who is... I don't really know how to describe her best, but she's described as a, she's often described as a turtle. Of course, she's not a turtle, but she's kind of some, some immortal being, some kind of god of gods, maybe even, but mostly she sleeps. Um, until such time as she's called upon to reorganize the pantheon. And then she makes the decision who comes in and who goes out. And so over, over the course of the ages, um, different ages have seen different pantheons um, ruling them. So at the moment, in, in our age, you have the 12 gods um, in Aventuria, which everyone knows. And you've got the Thorwellians, they have their own god. Svafnir, you've got the orcs, they have their own gods. The goblins believe in whatever they believe in. Um, and of course, God knows what they believe in in Uturia, and I have no idea what, what happens in Muranor, um, the Guldenland, no idea, because I've never really looked into that one. So basically, what they have done is they have put all of this knowledge together um, and written a huge history, which is 350 pa 15 pages of text. Um, and the first... Um, Um, the first 289 deal with a time or the times that happened and passed before Das Schwarze Auge became a game. So this is the prehistory. All of these pages are the prehistory. And the game time only starts on page 290 and is only 25 pages long. So it basically gives you a brief overview over what has happened since the first DSA adventure module came out up until 1035. So um, anything that happened in DSA or yeah, 1035, yeah. So they also give you a, a brief overview of what's happening in the Splitterdämmerung, so that's basically the seven um, heptarchs um, that got um, a little sl um, sliver of the demon crown. It was split into seven pieces and, you know, what, whatever happened to the people who found those pieces, well, they're all evil, of course, and they're doing evil things, but there is a, a, an adventure cycle um, called Splitterdämmerungszyklus, which actually deals with this, and you can have um, different adventures set in this, and they, they are all published, although they're only published for DSA 4.1, so anything DSA 5 related isn't in here. Um, the reason why, of course, they kept the second part very short is because you have um, source books, and again, only for DSA 4.1, I can only point this out, this is very, very important, to get all of the more recent history in detail, you either have to read and play, preferably play, the adventure modules, which are not available for DSA 5, but you can easily convert them. I'm doing this at the moment with um, the Grüne Hölle cycle for Uturia, Porto Velvenia. It's not a problem. You can do this quite easily. But you also have to try and get those old books. Um, you can also get them as PDFs, and um, <clears throat> so they are still available. So preferably, of course, you don't really need to write a lot about this because all players would have gone through those modules and would have basically lived in the world, inhabited the world, and would have gotten to know the world um, in, in so doing. Um, and anything that is DSA 5, of course, isn't in the book because this was published before DSA 5 came out and before any of those modules were, um, were uh, provided to the world. Um, but... I still think you need to read it because it gives you an overview and it gives you an overview of the richness and the depth and the texture of Dere. And a lot of things that are in this book, I have heard about even more recently, and I might have heard about them previously, but since I had no background knowledge, they didn't register. You know how it works. If you have a piece of knowledge that you acquire and then you suddenly realize, oh, it's mentioned everywhere. Why? Because you, you have acquired this piece of knowledge, you know what it is, you have this knowledge item in your brain, and suddenly you see it pop up everywhere. That doesn't mean it didn't pop up everywhere before, but it, it just didn't register. 
So um, I'm not saying that, and I've read this book once from cover to cover, that I will be able to tell you exactly what Maraskans erster Versuch einer Unabhängigkeit in 325 BF, uh, 327 BF was. I have no idea. But I've read it and I've kind of got an idea of certain um, things that have happened, certain topics that have been covered and certain tropes. Um, and if I need to know more, I can actually look in the really nice index at the back where everything is mentioned. I mean, the index is priceless. It's great. And here you've got the different countries or um, uh, baronies and so on. And you can see who is actually char in charge and when and who's ruling what. So, for example, um, uh, as of um, 2010 and uh, 1010 MBF, we have again um, a, a a Kaiser, so um, um, an emperor, an emperor, an empress, actually, um, in um, in the Horasreich, um, where there used to be kings, because obviously, you know, um, the the empire was destroyed, um, and it kind of gives you a good overview over who is who and what happens when, with regard to who the people are that are in charge. Um, you can also look up things that are very, um, this is a name register, but also a place register and a register that contains, um, you know, also the names of, 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 of places. So it is quite, uh, quite important. Um, if you want to look up something quite quickly, it gives you an overview. Um, the whole book gives you an overview over, and this is very important, how the different tribes of men, for example, of human beings spread out across the world, um, and um, also who was allied with whom at what uh, point in time. You don't really need to remember this and it's probably quite impossible to remember it all, but if you need to look it up, it's all in here. The one word of criticism, because I think this is an immensely well-written book, the approach that they have taken is that the first um, couple of ages are told by an immortal being called Khalven, who is a who takes the form of a giantess. She is immortal. But she also um, um, she stops being a part of the world. I don't want to say that she dies because that's never said. But apparently she got submerged um, in a great flood. And for, for all I know, she's sitting at the bottom of the ocean because as an immortal, she cannot really die. So she's sitting down there and maybe one day she will emerge, who knows. Um, but of course, this means that she stops contributing to the Historia because she simply doesn't know what's going on because she's at the bottom of the sea. And likewise, she also, because she basically uses the I form. So I thought this, I saw that. And she also says that I don't remember everything. You know, these are, these are eons. We're talking about probably millions of years that she's describing. I don't remember every single name. I don't remember this. I don't remember, or I wasn't there. I don't know what they were doing because even the immortals are not omniscient. They don't know everything. So this is one way of telling the story um, without actually saying, okay, then and in year blah, blah, blah of the second age, blah, blah, blah happened because that would make it really dry. And then later on, once basically they switch the view from away from what Halvin can tell us, Who's, a, who's an immortal and who knows about the gods. But she, she's kind of a goddess, if you like. But she said she never really tried to get into Alvaran. She was very happy staying in the, in the third sphere, which is actually the, the physical world that we inhabit. She was quite happy living there. You know, she didn't really want to, you know, become a god and live or become even more godly or godlike, if you will, and enter the Alvaran. She never really tried. She couldn't care less. Maybe she's lying. Maybe she tried and maybe she, she she got rejected, but she says she didn't want to. And then they switch away from this and basically then say that they draw upon information from different peoples, like, you know, the um, the dragon-like ones, you know, um, um, and the elves and so on. Um, but of course, they have their own view of history. They have their own view of the story. They only know the parts that they were directly involved in. Again, there is no omniscience. Um, and that weaves a really rich tapestry of what happens, and it is a good read. It's not something that's terribly dry. Um, the only thing that I will say, and this is my only word of criticism, is there are no there is there are no maps included. There are a couple of sketches of what Garret looks like at different ages. I think there may be there are at least two. There may be a third one, but that's it. 
And when you just basically are told, okay, and then Al Anfa moved to blah, you know, Al Anfa is a place, it's a city, and then its inhabitants, you know, its, its, its armies attacked, blah, blah, blah. You kind of go, okay, whereabouts is this? And I would have appreciated if they had at least had one, you know, every so often, let's say every 50 pages. You know, okay, there's a map, but that's, that's actually um, one of the very rare maps. Well, it would, would have been really nice to have kind of like an overview map of Aventuria. I mean, sorry, this should have been printed in here. They should have added a, a twice A4 map. That would have been really, really important. And then maybe have, you know, like a couple of maps spread throughout. They don't even need to be full color maps because all of this is, of course, in black and white. It would have been enough if they had had a couple of maps here or there for people to orient themselves because I honestly don't know um, the world from a geographical point of view or geographical point of view well enough to be able to say, okay, so what does that actually mean? If, the, if it says they up and left their city and then moved to someplace else, how far did they actually move? How far is this away? What, you know, what are the physical and geographical relationships between these areas? I don't know enough and I haven't looked at maps long enough to actually be able to make this connection. And that's something that I would have wanted to see. And they didn't do this. And that's my one word of criticism for this. Other than that, I think everyone who is interested in the world of DSA and who also wants to run adventures that take into account the living world of Dere and that take into account the meta plot should read this. If you're only going to be a player... I would almost advise against it because you might learn things that come up in adventures later on um, and then you would rob yourself of the possibility of just going, oh, wow, that's what this was about. Oh, that's, there was foreshadowing. Wow, this is so cool because some of these things are explained in here. Some backgrounds are explained in here, which over time, the people living in the world inhabiting the world are slowly discovering and the players are discovering this by playing the modules but some of this information is already laid out for you um <coughs> also what i really don't understand is why this one has not been updated i mean or, or what the plans are for this one because again it's one of the old publications so i'm not even sure um if this is um, if this is still in print, or if the if the if the copies that are on sale or that can be can be bought off of the website, are just essentially the remainder of the printing of two thousand fifteen, and once they're sold out, they will not reprint. Because I think this is a very very invaluable tool for game masters. Um, and another thing, of course. And the big downside of this is it's only available in German. Again, um, I don't understand why this would not have been translated. I think this needs to be translated if DSA really wants to enter the English-speaking market. Because game masters who really care about the world will want to read this. And at the moment, there isn't enough information on the world out there in English for English game masters to um, to read and to absorb to make it possible for them to play in Dere to and experience its full richness. So I think Uly Ulysses really has to make a decision. Um, if they want to really penetrate the English-speaking market, and I've said this before, they need to produce source books about every single region, not just Siebenbindküste and Streitende Reiche, because these two exist for DSA 5, and I think they've also been translated. I'm not sure, but they might have been. And they really need to translate this book, and they need to, re they need to reprint all of the source books for all of the areas and regions and translate them into English. If they don't do this, the TDE, the Dark Eye, um, will, will die a very, very quick death. So that's all from me, Historia Aventurica. If you speak German, if you're into DSA, if you are a game master, go and get it. I got it for, I think, 50 euros. It's not cheap, but it is well worth it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.